Hey guys, RC here, back with our next episode of Let's Play Out of the Park Baseball 18, version 18 of the game. This is our historical fictional Let's Play. I am uh, in my first season with the Phillies. They are a dismal wreck of a franchise uh, after doing a 10-year simulation uh, to get a background for the league. Uh, one of the six worst teams in all of Major League Baseball that we took a look at uh, during the three-episode preview of the league and that's the team I decided to go with um, and we're struggling we're struggling immensely we are in uh, last place uh, in the NL East uh, but you know we're not faring much worse than some of the other teams the Expos the Pirates uh, we did catch a screw up in the uh, ratings last time not the ratings but uh, we had a gotten a trade last year uh, now this was before I took over the team so uh, the AI had traded uh, for Danny Bencomo uh, I have him in my starting lineup but if we take a look at his game logs take a look at his innings here eight innings last time that was after we caught the, the mistake or the the error and before that going all the way back to opening day the longest he had lasted was one and a third innings um, now he was on a seven pitch pitch count limit so very rarely did he go over that uh, I'm not sure what the game engine derives uh, to to go over that if it lets him finish the current batter uh, if it lets him get out of the inning sometimes uh, but in this case uh, he struck out one batter faced two batters uh, only recorded one out and was done uh, giving up one hit one strikeout no runs and was done and what it was is he, when you went into the available actions and the game strategy he actually had a pitch count limit of seven. Honestly, I had never seen that before. I've never used that on a pitcher uh, ever, going all the way back to Out of the Park 3, uh, which is when I started playing this game. And so, yeah, wasn't even thinking about that um, until I was going through that box score and saw that he lasted one-third of an inning, and there was nothing about a rain delay or anything so that's what made me start looking at it but uh, anyway uh, let's get back into some baseball play another week here presumptuous of you alright this guy is 24 we got him in a trade He's actually been pretty good at double A, ERA wise. His whip's never been great. Three pitches, a little lazy, run of the mill starter. Um, ninety two to ninety four, cutter change splitter. Yeah, I just, you know, I don't know that he's going to be good enough. Let's see. Kata, Katayama. There he is right there. So he's doing okay at double A. Not lights out, but doing okay. Struggled last year at triple A. And even though he's 24, I don't think he's ready to call up. So you know what? I am going to set him to available, and we'll see if we can get a trade offer for him. Uh, Eric Harris. He's 24. 
hit 244 last year in a late season call up, 206 in AAA. He is hitting 320, 320 this year, but that's his first sign of life, and that's only through f f six starts. Scouting report falls apart, platoon player at best, dogs it. I mean, he looks like he could be a really solid utility player with, you know, a good glove at several positions, a great glove in left field. Pinch runner, possibly, but honestly, I, I don't see anything that's making him jump out to me here. And we got him back in 67 with a trade with the White Sox. Oh, let me check one thing here real quick. Yep. Just wanted to make sure about the recording. Um, yeah, so again, ooh, out of Erath, Louisiana. That's uh, not too far from, uh, from my hometown. Um, don't be having an attitude with me. <laughs> we might be cousins. Um, yeah, well, that's all right. We'll go ahead and finish out the uh, the week. Oh, gosh. Josh Altimus, oblique strain, three weeks. That's uh, my right fielder. So we will put him on the DL. 15-day... Um, you know, was it this er Eric Harris? Eh, can he play right field? He can. But, but, but. All right, Brandhorst. And he's 26. That's going to put Bell... I'd be a little more inclined. Well, let's see. Is there anybody that's just really jumping out, killing the ball? Three oh two, two thirty three, three sixty eight, and he's twenty eight years old. Second shortstop. Line drive hitter. Three twenty six, two eighty nine, one eighty six last year. Got some power. Third base and shortstop. And Nick's only 22, and I don't think he's ready. Um, Eric Harris. Couple more guys. Seven at bats, hitting 571. Yeah, I'm not feeling that. I tell you what, you know, this Eric Harris kid, he's the one that we just saw did not want a minor league deal. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and call him up. Give him a shot. Yeah, says he's not going to play a whole lot, but every sixth game... Actually, you know what? Let's uh, let's go up to fifth game there, and that gets some good rotation. All right. Finish out the week again. All right. Those are just uh, contract notices. So we'll finish out the week. All right. 9 and 20, 
five losses in a row. Pittsburgh loses ten in a row, and we can't catch them. And <laughs> and the Cubs actually fall behind the Expos after going one and nine. So, yeah, we did not help ourselves here. All right, let's check our email. All right, Tavera, Kubic, Munoz, Fowler, Holm, Orozco, all signed. Julian Perez, his hit streak has continued to 31, 32, 33. Dylan Williams of the Astros reaches a 20-game hit streak. Cody Derringer, 29 of the Indians. Player of the Week for the American League. Hitting 450 for the week. Kevin Austin, 30-year-old first baseman for the Braves. Actually got called up from AAA this, this year. And has been up for just a few games, probably this week. Um, 533. Let's actually check him out. So he had uh, 533 average. So let's, and we're in May. All right, batting stats, batting splits. Game log. All right, so no, he didn't just get called up, but actually, yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. He was called up on May 6th, so that was Tuesday, and he went two for four, three for four, two for five, and one for two in his first four games. That's a pretty good start to a career there, kid. Uh, one, two, three homers in those four games and seven RBIs. Holy hell. <laughs> That's not bad at all. Let's check his scouting report. Hovers below average. So it doesn't really say anything about him. And if we look at his stats, 248 in the majors, in, in 68, 289 back in AAA, 237 last year in a, pretty much a full season, 301 in to start AAA this year, and then, of course, you know, we can't call it a great year with just four games under his belt, but that's a pretty good start for the year. Now, granted, he is 30, so, you know, not as great as if he was some 20 three or 24 year old kid making his debut but still that's that's a really good uh, way to start his season uh, the rookie leaders including David Johnson at 23 with a 28 with 28 hits tied for second in the majors among rookies and the Phillies plummet to last in the power rankings ouch All right, still looking to make that profit margin this year. Dustin Farrar. Yeah, I think I'm going to let him go, too. That's another guy that wasn't showing up a minute ago, or last week. So remember, we only had four guys up here. Now this, well, maybe I just didn't see him. Oh, you know what? I think that's... Is that what I did? No, he's still right there at 120. Wow, Nick Falls is going to go up arbitration-wise. Are you kidding me? Why is he going to make 450 and 600,000? Yeah, why? Um, first round draft pick, number six overall, 1967. I just don't think he's ready to come up. Yeah, 
you know, I see some pretty solid numbers in the lower minors. Really struggling this year. But man, that's that's going to be uh Oof. Yeah, that's some hellacious arbitration. I wonder if that's guaranteed or if that's just projected. Because that is arbitration, right? Possible arbitration eligible. Okay, that's... So it's asterisk, A with an asterisk, and A with a pound sign. Um, all right, possible arbitration or else auto renewal and possible free agent eligible else arbitration. Okay, so those aren't guaranteed, I don't guess, but still, ugh. <laughs> he, be he better start making a big impact. I mean, he is our top prospect, but hitting 232 is not prospecting for much of anything. All right, let's get into the schedule. All right, so a th six to three loss. Ben Como, nine hits, four runs. Not horrible, but he does take the loss. Haskell got hit again, two runs. Dyke actually pitched good. He, he still got a bad ERA from his really rough start. Three to two in extra innings. We got we gave up uh, both of their runs. To blow the lead, got the lead back in the bottom, and then gave it away in the 10th. Yeah, none of them pitched horribly. Just, you know, not enough support. 6-1 to one to the Dodgers. Garcia, not one of his better outings. He's actually gone up over a 2.5 ERA for the first time this season. 7 to 5 McClure 10 hits in 6 and 2 thirds. Haskell got rocked and a 7 to 1 loss so Bencomo took it on the chin twice oof Cardinals Expos and Mets Cardinals Mets Expos all three teams at the top of our division so this is where we can make a little hay if we can uh, get a couple of wins DL still pretty set there you know it says he's ready to come up but I, I'm just not feeling it yet <laughs> Looks like that hamstring for Johnson's going to finally heal up this week. He's been playing, but looks like it'll finally uh, get caught up. Let's go back to this screen here. All right. Uh, so we're going to move you to AAA and off the waivers. Ten games, two and zero with one save and a zero point six five ERA. A trade in nineteen sixty eight. Seven point two walks this year. Wow. Garden variety ball player, 91 to 93, two pitches. Let's see. Eric Campbell, 26. See, he looks like he was solid in the minors, but he's really struggled this year in the bigs. 
nine outings, 29 hits in 21 innings. Supplemental first round pick in the first year player draft, 1963. Yeah, I'm not ready to give up on him just yet. Oh, yeah, let's finish the week. I've cleared that guy off of the DFA. All right. Three and seven, eight and a half back. All right, Perez, Julian's uh, hit streak ends at 33. Jordan Garcia shut out Montreal, so he got his first win of the season. Awesome. Evan Frazier of the White Sox calls a player-only meeting. Ben Patton of the Padres, done for the year. All right, Dylan Williams, hit streak reaches 25. Brandon King of the Mets gets a 20-game hit streak. Senators Orioles game, benches clearing brawl. No punches thrown, but a lot of scuffling. All right, the AL Star of the Week, Josh Curtis of the Royals. 458, 10 runs, uh, 10 RBIs, 9 runs scored, 4 homers. Dylan Williams in the middle of that big hit streak, player of the week for the National League. And power rankings, we actually climb up two spots, but still down near the bottom. All right, taking a look at the schedule. All right, we get swept by the Cardinals, two games to zero. Chevers one and three. Bullpen pitched well. Ruth, Ramirez with two hits each. Six to three loss. Schwab's now two and three. He only lasted two innings. Uh, he was hurt. But it looks like he's okay now, so he just, you know, tweaked himself during the game. Chapman pitched pretty solid in relief, four and two-thirds innings. And an inning and a third of shutout ball for Campbell. So we just looked at him. He must have got hit really hard. Going back to opening day. Oh yeah, seven hits, six runs in two and a third innings. That jumped him up to a 23 ERA. And he's really been fighting that ever since. You know, he got it down to 6.75, gave up three runs, two runs, two runs. Just hasn't gone on a roll yet. All right, Montreal is uh, one of the you know top teams, although one of the worst top teams in our division. And we took both of those games for nothing. That was uh, Garcia with his uh, complete game, his first win of the season. That was awesome to see. 11 to five. Ben, Co no, I thought Ben Como was pitching that one. I guess not. I wonder McClure. See, I've got McClure set at number five. Let's go strict. Yeah, I don't know why I'm going from one to five to three to two. That's weird, right? Can't be the only one that thinks that's weird. He pitched pretty good. That's not bad for our number five starter. Campbell got the win. But, again, two runs in one-third of an inning, you know. 
Haskell with the hold, Faulkner sporting a pretty bad e ERA this year. And we split a double header with the Mets and then lost 13 to 1. Wow. We got eight hits but only managed one run. That's that's too bad. Schwab two for four, eight hits, three innings. Five for Chapman. Blows his ERA up. And then two scoreless innings for Campbell. <laughs> Go figure. Uh, Gentry his third, Garrido his third, Escamilla with two, giving him six, King his eighth. So five home runs on the day for the Mets. Ouch. Two seventy three, a buck ninety. He can play third, but not very well. Twenty in a ball. You know what? That's a guy that's kind of got my attention. Olofsson. See, it doesn't say he's ready, though, but his rate, his, his numbers tell me he's ready. 92 to 94, ground ball pitcher, four pitches. You know, he's 25. I think think I'm going to send Faulkner down. He's only 23. I'm going to call him up. All right, let me set triple A. So Faulkner now goes into the closer's role. And Tolufson. Ramirez. Ninety four to ninety six neutral. We'll get him some innings, see how he does, and that may work him into the rotation. Kind of thought it would put him over there, but that's okay. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and put a cut in right here, guys. Uh, thank you so much for checking this out, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.